sitting in a Berlin airport train and I'm going to Albania. I have no idea what to expect. I'm very excited to see how things unfold. So it is mid-May 2023 at the arrival hall here in Tirana Airport. Exchange money behind me and for 100 euro I received 10,700 lek. Online it says the exchange rate is about 11,300 lek. So it's a little less, but oh, whatever man, we just got here, I need some cash. Albania is not part of the European Union. Phone calls are more expensive. Well that's an offering I got from Vodafone. 35 gigabytes, valid for 21 days. Unlimited phone calls. Unlimited SMS for 19 euro 90. I always love getting to a new place I've never been before. It's so exciting. It's nice and warm by the way. Probably around 23 degrees I'd say. Sunshine. I got my phone charged. I got data. Now I'm gonna take a bus to the city center. Just exit the airport, walk straight and can't miss the buses. Different operators and many of them go to the city center. They'll charge me about 400 like this. 3 euro 60. The bus dropped me off in the city center. I'm on my way to get some food now. I uh, found it, the only Indian restaurant in Tirana. Chana Masala is about 8 euro. And that is right in the city center. And it's a pretty fancy looking nice place. And while I am at an Indian restaurant in Albania, here's a little fun fact. Shaking your head like this in India means yes, right? It's the same here in Albania actually. And nodding your head means no. Wow, this is gonna be confusing. Yes, no. Vegetable pakoras, three sauces, rice and chana masala, chickpeas, bingo. That was quite good. And now I'm making my way to the hotel. Walking about 1.5 kilometers. So it's 8.45 in the evening on a Monday. The streets are buzzing, very lively, a lot of people. Definitely summer vibes here. People sitting on cushions on the meadow. And it's around 22 degrees, I'd say. And the air is mild and humid. Really nice, it smells like trees. It's always interesting how the local traffic situation is. Pretty wide streets here in the city. Two lane, bicycle paths. The thing that impresses me most up until now is how green it is. It smells like we are in a forest, even though we are in the capital. A city of not too many people, but a little over 500,000. So many flowers everywhere. A little bit of a shopping boulevard. All right, I'm in my room. It's a room with two single beds, even though I wanted a double bed. The receptionist wanted eight euro per day city tax from me, which also wasn't announced by the company I booked this hotel with. Bathroom looks all right. The paint's coming off the ceiling here. Everything is a lot dirtier than it seems at first sight. Good morning. Sleep was average. I had like five mosquitoes to chase away at 5 a.m. in the morning and I killed another four. Let's have breakfast. Looks like from the 1970s here. This is what's what. It's called. Wow, Hotel Broadway. Let's go on a little stroll. The rain hasn't started yet. Unfortunately, rain's been forecast for my whole stay from 11 o'clock on. People selling their books on a bridge. Pretty dope. Loads of trees for sure. Very green city. This is the center. Coffee shop. Yeah, I need a real coffee. That seems to be an exception. Nothing vegan really, but some good coffee at least. So this rarity, a cappuccino with soya milk, costs 230 lakh, which equals about 2 euro 10 or something. Good coffee. 
I can't say it enough, I'm really pleased with the amount of green in the city. A flea market style. This reminds me of Yugoslavia in the 80s. My family and I would always travel through Yugoslavia in the 80s, driving from Germany to Bulgaria. There were a lot of these vegetable markets along the way. It's getting cozy now. The Albanian flag in the background. That building looks pretty adventurous if you ask me. The Western modern world has definitely arrived here in Tirana. Of course you can still tell that you're not necessarily in the most modern European city. It still has a little bit of a wild edge to it. Welcome to Skanderbeg Plaza, the very central point of Tirana, named after the national hero Skanderbeg. And there he is. This place is dude on a horse. It seems like every big European city has a dude on a horse. At least one. This is the guy, Skanderbeg, Albania's national hero. He looks pretty cool. Just a small mosque at Skanderbeg Plaza. I hear there are these free walking tours where you can gain loads of information about everything. I'd really just rather explore everything, everywhere I go to firsthand, so I can see it for what it really is right now. Quite a lot of buskers. Second guy now on this plaza. Sound good. You can charge your devices for free at the local bus stop. Look at all these trees. All this vegetation right in the middle of the center. What an old funky looking bus, isn't it? The weather is really pleasant. I'm sliding down the edge between breaking into a sweat and feeling totally fine. It's almost a bit too warm. So cool, you have this little bit of a hard bit with free Wi-Fi right where all the buses stop and the taxis. People can chill under the trees, on the meadows and surf in the internet. Kalim Kembe Suresh. All those trees really make the difference, man. So much more pleasant to walk through a city that's so green. I heard that bunkers are a big thing here in Tirana. I'm considering checking out one of the main tourist attractions. A former anti-nuclear bunker of the Ministry of Interior. Wow. So this is what a nuclear bunker looks like. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Thanks. So this is inside the bunker. We're really just one staircase below the surface. Hard to imagine that you would be safe from a nuclear bomb. There have to be 16 and over to enter this room. Oh man, there's all these rooms with all these images of people holding guns and fighting. Half of these rooms are crammed with roofs and uh, guides telling the history. The communist regime under Enver Hoxha was characterized by extreme brutality and terror. So these are the lists of people that got executed because of their political status. This list includes 5,500 people. Political dissidents were targeted for persecution and anyone suspected of opposition to the regime was at risk of imprisonment, torture or execution. This is how you sleep in a fucking bunker while wow, the world is going to shit above. This is where the decontamination takes place, I guess, for people that have been exposed to nuclear radiation. The regime's secret police force, the Sigurimi, was notorious for its use of torture techniques that included beatings, electrocution and waterboarding. Political prisoners were subjected to inhumane conditions in cramped, unsanitary cells with no access to medical care, where they often suffered from starvation, dehydration and disease. 
Forced labor was common, with many prisoners forced to work in dangerous and physically demanding conditions in mines, factories, or in construction projects. Female prisoners were often subjected to sexual abuse, and some were used for medical experiments or forcibly sterilized. Imagine you have that job, come up with ideas how to torture people. Painting with marmalade? Wow. I've been down there for only 20 minutes and I'm freaked out. I mean, I guess it's some kind of privilege within the existence of humanity that you can live a life without having to go through any of these horrors. I mean, that list, dude, who the f comes up with that kind of shit? Let alone doing it to other people and how fucking cold how biased how manipulated you have to be I'm going to a park now man Whew.